Welcome to the replay version for B Berlin Redo on uh, Mindstein difficulty, soft cap of course 20%. We have to, everything is deployed. We've just uh, I just stopped the a replay while this guy has moved in, or after this guy moved in. It took quite a long time to do uh, this, and uh, even though the actual battle itself, when I first figured it out, is actually very easy. Um, also, I think Idle Cleese did it like this, so you can also go and watch his uh, video on Manstein. Uh, but I started out with a more ambitious uh, goal, which was I wanted to wipe it by killing the uh, pocket up here and then swinging out here with one tank force and one tank force here. Taking these two out, this one we can actually get, will come and engage us, this one we have to go and kill actively. And then end up with a with killing Osovsky here, and another force comes in to kill uh, Shukov. You can't do it on Manstein, they're too big, especially the uh, guards, are just, they, they are so artillery demanding before you can kill them. So I went, hmm, then what? Are we going to do a sort of hybrid of the wipe, or are we going to go straight for the, the throat instead? Uh, which is, I mean, it's pretty obvious, you know, there's one sitting here, there's one sitting here, there's one sitting here. And then I went, you know what, we at the end of campaign, we get nothing out of getting heroes or kills or anything. So let's just do it uh, straight for the uh, straight for the throat, and that's what we did. With Leech can charge here, a, an infantry line between Leech and Kasha, and Kasha down here and charge with a uh, with infantry. I deliberately picked my not my my, my experience my, my infantry needing needing third heroes for the operations down here, while in between uh, between Leech up here and Kasha down here, it's just experienced infantry with entrenchment. Once they get entrenched, the guards won't touch my, uh, either. So that's a good thing. Also, when they're entrenched, they won't fire artillery. But I also deliberately make sh made sure that it's very limited how much artillery they can actually maneuver into fire because I've pulled them, pulled them back here to to a line here. So it's limited what they can do to them. And generally, they the yeah, Soviet artillery won't fire uh, that high, highly entrenched infantry, except Katusha's I've seen do it. I tried using infantry over here, but they come forward with the Katusha and suicides on uh, Katusha's come forward and suicide on the um, on the infantry, uh, even if they even though the infantry has entrenchment, so it's no good. And that's why I said rulers. The rule up here at Leech's position is no tank, no no infantry, all tanks and artillery, and then uh, of course artillery, meaning uh, artillery that are hard targets with good defense bonus, with good defense, and that's why why we have the mounts here. So Lichka, Kasha, and Orndorf. Orndorf has the mobile force. In the first phase, we hold it here, hold it here, with the infantry digging in between Lichka and Kasha, and Kasha actively working on preparing the ground for Orndorf down here. And why? And then the uh, what Kasha does that Orndorf rush, rushes down to kill Kozasovsky. You can do that very quickly. In phase two, he returns. And Kasha has prepared the ground, and uh, so Orndorf can can go straight in here. Take this take this position, and then in the, th the third phase we kill Shukov. That's the easy way to do it, and it can be done extremely fast. Even on Manstein, it's not challenging. You just need to know the map, and you need to know what you can do, what you can, what you can't do. As always, for example, with the deployment and a group activating up here, I know I can stack them up in front of. Basically, this is like a one. Uh, it's like a wall going here, holding back the flood from from here. So they're highly ineffective. They just stack up, while uh, at the same time there's some artillery stacking up in front of Lichka's position, and very sporadic, sporadic activity in the area down here. If we do it quickly enough, the, the guys down here and here they don't even activate, and it's it's not a challenge. These guys activate in turn 30. And these guys in turn 18, so and Shukov, I think we killed him in turn turn 16. Enough of that. No, I also need to explain the second reason why I was delayed is that I have been uh, I've I moved to uh, to Bangladesh for for work for the next 
Ah, I'm here another five weeks. I've been here for a couple of weeks and then we're doing a six six day uh, weeks of work so it's limited how much time I have available. But let's just uh, go back here and uh, let it run. This of course is a situation where you need map knowledge to get to let goose do this. It's just I wanna basically I wanna have uh, harmless units stack up in front of my position that means we just surgically take out the artillery as always it's standard procedure really and it's a classic goose uh, hit and run fortunately his role wasn't very impressive but we killed him that's why I lined up all that artillery and also I'm giving people a chance to he, uh, it's possible that Hector would have been better for this, so I probably have earned a star on him. Uh, there's no way Bebo can get to five stars in this battle, it takes too long time. And, and of course, he, and he wasn't, so, so I think he made it so much. So 446, the climb from four to five stars is very, is very slow. Okay, and most important in the first uh, faces to hammer away at this position, letting the yard pointers uh, help, so the uh, so I can send the tanks quickly down towards the uh, Wasosovsky and kill him. As always, the yard pointers aren't, aren't that good at attacking, especially not at this stage of the campaign where the Soviets have a lot of uh, anti-tank guns. Uh, anti tank guns will hit the Arc Panthers for very good reasons. The, uh, especially the, of course, the the, the toad anti tank gun will anti tank guns will hit the Arc Panthers. Not the, uh, obviously not the uh, armored uh, anti tank guns, but it's because the Arc Panthers have shitty uh, soft attack rating. No wonder. Okay, and we're breaking through here with. Um, it's Hetzer now and two other infantry that, that still need to get the, the third hero. So I only got one of them and it was just a spawning hero. So, but it's just that. I mean, might as well do it. Have a go at it. I think it, did, it accomplished very little. Wardle also switched to this one because the, uh, the nine years will attack him. So, no point uh, having him as a, f a fighter point. And here I have a little bit of a surf capacity in the bomber department. Also noting that the, the enemy fighters can't reach this position, so they can be abusing knowledge to the, to the max. Here we also abuse, abusing knowledge by knowing that, by utilizing that that uh, bomber would get ambushed by Barkhorn. What we want to establish in front of Kasha's position is a stalemate. Basically, both Kasha and Leechka, they want to uh, uh, create a stalemate. In front of Kasha, we need to make sure that they don't have artillery that can sit and support them. And I know they have very little artillery in front of Kasha. The only one I need to, to work to get rid of is the ISU 152. You can see we already hold this now on one of them, and we goose took out another toad. The ISU 152 is a little bit uh, challenging, but when you know the AI's behavior, you can quickly figure out that you can just make him come forward in entertain mode. So you don't really have to do anything. He, he, he does your job for you, <laughs> gets himself killed. There he is. He's, he's, at that position in front of Kasha, he's, he's a big problem. That's a problem, They're sitting in front of Kasha's position. Because he's just in, in range of my infantry that will not have time to entrench. But we can utilize that there's a victory hex he can get close to. So that's what I'm doing. You can see him sitting there. That's a very unpleasant position to have an enemy uh, for an enemy artillery. We are not having him sit there. 
and the state that he is also probably false through his greed. Watch out with his stupid game design. Again, very focused on, on rushing down with Rondo, but you can see the Archfant is simply just helping him him uh, get rid of stuff so he can focus on getting forward. But the Archfant is kind of continue down south, they, uh, they, they are too vulnerable to uh, toad and to tank. And into infantry by the way also. Three artillery pieces from Rondo. So you can safely knock out that AA in the south. I haven't seen that fail when testing it. But I've seen it fail if only point two. But with three hits, it's, it's I, I never saw it fail. There he is. It's nice to know that he would do that, otherwise he would he would be a big problem. So again, often the um, the game itself itself will solve your problems.
With how they're stacking up in front of her cash's position. That's I mean it's become one of the oldest tricks in the book. When you want to deal with an enemy that's much bigger than you. Just uh, make sure they get stacked up. Now oh, it's a pretty can pretty much going cheat kill by water. I mean there's no such thing of course when you have rogues, but I haven't seen that fate. And it's important to get it in one go, but then you can get the get the the Wasasovsky to move to the airfield and then we just prep this slot for him and kill him afterwards. It's a really uh, effective it's very very you can get rid of Wasasovsky very very quickly in that may in that way. This should have been Leechka. Instead of Cash, I could maybe have gotten that 30 round Leechka. But then on the other hand, who cares? It's a. It doesn't really have any value. This is a mistake. There was a target needing a level bomb. I hope at Leechka's uh, position. ISU-152 and to take note, that's a little bit of a tall order to take him out safely with a tank hit because he will fire back Here's the first day attack. As long as we get two of them trapped and killed off, then we're fine. I managed to. Uh, it's uh, I haven't looked at how to get uh, get maybe you can get three trapped, but it's not a, it's not a big deal. Two is good enough. Then there's uh, four flag pieces too, or four AA guns to uh, damage the, the four remaining, and then uh, the fighters go in and, and uh, mob it up. So, you don't even have to think about how to trap uh, three of them, just two. That's good enough. Yeah, he went into capture it, so that's what we want. And then a harmless unit protecting it. And once they sit in a victory hex, it's very difficult to get them to leave again.
Now hit him with a level bomber. That means he doesn't want to sit on the airfield. See if we can get this uh, guard integrated into our position by having him take this one, and then once he sits in that victory, he ain't leaving. But he can't take any supplies or uh, or replacements, so really it's just they're at the mercy of their own greed, really. Now we just uh, it may have seen it. I was just I just switched Litka out of this position because I have secured the two uh, Soviet contributions to my front line. So Litka can leave now and join up with Kash and Rondov to go and kill uh, Zhukov. And uh, I think I've said already Litka is actually the best at uh, attacking. It's not Rondov. Litka has the initiative, but also a Bigger attack bonus and defense, or also big, a big defense bonus. There he, he moved up here now, and he's just in in front of tanks. I have three tanks available. I can't use the yard punt uh, because that dense tank will rip the yard punt a new one. Didn't kill him, but I have a tank in reserve, so finish him and then we pull out. And we are already working on the next one, the next Soviet hero or leader. And then here another one. When you get these ISU-152 in front of your position, you just destroy them. But I'm being very selective with what I destroy. Geschwader 52 uh, Erik Erik Hartmann Look at all that artillery stacked up in front of Lichka, and they just can't do anything. Except to check a random shot once in a while at one of my tanks. But it's just, it, it's a classic. It's one of the keys to really successfully handling the game is to, uh, to make sure that the enemy units are ineffective.
Yeah, that was a little bit risky there. I thought I had an initiative, but I didn't. It's just, it's only the hero, uh, the unique heroes that can that can do this thing safely. Especially, I put Viensberg at that location because he's the hardest hitting unit I have. Because it's a position where I simply don't have a unit to block the path into the uh, bunker, so I have to kill them and actively kill them when they uh, reach that location. It's just the, the position is designed for stalemate, but I can't stalemate it completely. So if anybody tries to go into that uh, in front of Vianzberg, they get killed. Yeah, that happens once in a while, but it seems like they are. It seems like it's sporadic, not really any plan in it. Now there's a unit we really don't want him forward, so because it's a card. So Vianzberg says, no, 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 you're dead.
Oh, the force uh, from the northeast is coming forward. They they, they started moving forward in turn, uh, in turn in turn nine. They activated in turn eight, but they just uh, they 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 just uh, get get backed up behind the, the rest. But there's some pretty unpleasant units in that uh, force, and they, they, all the forces in the corners have unpleasant units. Especially big IS twos and guards. Getting really awesome enough for the air tag in turn 12. Also, six units. And that KV came in to defend the victory Hicks. After I killed the uh, uh, Shukin, Shu, what's his name? Shukin. This is last hero for him. Of no, <laughs> of no significance. He's uh, prepping now for the attack. Setting up some traps. It must be the two homes that uh, end up being attacked, as far as I can tell. Yeah, they actually had spotting now on the, on the bunker. So that uh, artillery was able to fire at it. Makes no difference. We took two out. Then we just have to kill the fighters. Again, with four fighters and four AA, it's easy.
just uh, each of the fighters takes a, an AA hit and then we just uh, mob it up with the fighters. It's pretty easy to do. And also you can do it safely with the flying wing. towards uh, uh, Leshukov now so it won't be long I don't think that guy would actually move out, even though he can get close to the command longer. He must be attracted to a Victor Hex. Oh yeah, that's right, I can see there's a Victor Hex that's close to the, the command locker, that's why. That guy, the ISU 152 is now moving in. We can actually take a shot at my uh, my uh, AA a, a, a gun sitting in the open. It, it makes no difference. I just I just didn't pay attention to it. It's pretty obvious that he would do that. Though I haven't seen him done it before in testing it, but when I look at it here, it's pretty clear that that's what he wants to do. Could live by morning. useless look at how many are stacked up in front of Kasha it's just well it's not Kasha anymore it's Sukkos it's just ridiculous they just sit there, they spend the whole battle sitting there, doing nothing. Now we are starting to engage Sutka, so yeah. Shukov. I could have done that a little bit better. Should have had the, that uh, big anti tank on removed by Ulti and then gotten the... So I could have actually had four tanks around uh, Shukov. That instinct gun I should have killed that quick, quickly, and had, uh, so I could have gotten five, four tanks in, in around him, and he also would have not been able to escape if I had failed to kill him in one go. Another one by Biensberger.
Ah, shit. <laughs> but it, it, has, it happens once in a while. Yeah, that one was also... I mean, I actually saw that he would do it. Because he could get close to the victory. It's, it's a total pathetic way of attacking. I think we're going for him. He has a 23 strength, but the level power took a lot of suppression in on him. We <laughs> try and get some more suppression in. I think I actually managed to hit him. Yeah, that was a suppression hit there. And now they come in. Lichka is the best. So that's now to 15. Now 11. And you can see I should have had that uh, fourth tank in from the south from the beginning, then it would have made more sense. Now he comes in. Also would have had the advantage, he wouldn't have been able to escape if I had failed to kill him. And you don't have to kill him until turn 19. In turn 20 it gets kind of problematic because there's an air attack incoming. And also I don't really want to have the more of the Soviet forces activate. If the force from the south west activates, I think you are going to get pro in trouble with you with your with the airfield. good and you can see how much is left I'm holding that massive force is being held back by this line they simply can't get get into position so this whole thing is just in a completely completely useless the Soviets might, might as well not have them they are of no value and these guys don't activate until turn 30 and these activate in turn 18 and all of this stuff is just uh, scattered around. And these guys down here, they're just uh, hold position active. They won't come up and do anything. Yeah, thank you for watching.